Hi friends, in the previous session we have seen uh, SPFX workbench and different types of SPFX workbench like local workbench and SharePoint workbench. In this video we are going to see uh, the basic file structure that we are going to use in SharePoint framework. When we uh, create a SharePoint uh, sol SPFX solutions using uh, let's say human generator means when we scaffold the SharePoint framework it, it, uh, it creates one solution with with a hello world web part template so in this template there are few files uh, that uh, a developer need to understand means uh, they should have some basic knowledge about these files to get started with the spfx so in this short video we will see what are the different important files uh, that we use in spfx and uh, how we can work with those files to create our uh, spfx uh, web part so let's get started So here uh, I'm on my blog office365notes.com if you go to the SharePoint SPFX course you can find a link for SPFX file structure so just open that blog and here uh, on the first uh, image I have mentioned all the important files uh, that we are going to cover in this video uh, you can uh, go through the entire blog where I have uh, explained you uh, all, uh, all the details about each and every files in detail so but uh, for this video we are just going to see about these uh, uh, these important files so let's get started so uh, when we scaffold our spfx solution using human generator uh, we basically find three important folders one is config folder another is node underscore modules folder and another is the source folder we also have the root folder where all these folders besides uh, so under this root folder we have these three folders i'll just quickly share my uh, vs code so here you can see uh, this is the scaffolded spfx solution here you can see we have three main folders like this config folder uh, then this node modules folder and this src folder config node module and src and this root folder is nothing but all these uh, entire uh, solution is the root folder so the uh, first folder is the config folder so here uh, uh, the spfx uh, here in the spfx we define the configuration related to the spfx solution in this config folder there are two important files which are config.json and package-solution.json so if you see here under config folder uh, you can see config.json and package-solution so these two uh, json files are important uh, to understand about the remaining json file you can just uh, read out the um, uh, remaining uh, article uh, where you will get uh, details about those files but as a spfx developer uh, you are uh, we are mainly focusing on these uh, a few files so under config folder you can see uh, it contains the list of all the web parts their entry point and the references of external js so um, when we create any uh, spfx solution we can create multiple web parts and multiple extensions under a single solution so let's say you have created a multiple web parts so uh, all the details about that web part will uh, will get referenced in this config.json file so i have opened this file and you can see i have uh, two web parts one is hello world web part and another is hello world react web part so you can see under this src folder under web parts folder you can see these two web parts so uh, the reference for these two web parts are there in this config.json folder so we can see that the entry point for all these web parts are uh, mentioned in this file and also if we use any external uh, uh, javascript library or any external module so that reference will get added in this file also so this is one of the important file and you can um, uh, say like uh, it will define our uh, entry points uh, the manifest file for each web part and also the external files references the second file is the package-solution.json so it will basically contain our web part name then the description and version 
so let's open this package happen solution so uh, here I have mentioned a web part name but actually it's a solution name apologize for that so it will contain the uh, solution name so here you can see uh, my solution name is spfx project client side solution so if you remember when we add any app in our sharepoint site uh, we can see uh, the app name for example list library these are the app names so also we can give the custom app name uh, with uh, here okay also we will have some unique id for each app we can define the version of our app for example in future if you update anything in the code you can um, uh, change the version here so that the users will see the version while they uh, add the app so these two files are important under this config folder next folder is the node underscore modules folder so uh, uh, so this contains the JavaScript module dependencies used by developer, which gets downloaded by the Node.js. So this is kind of a, a, a backend folder. We do not deal with this folder, but this is a very important folder. So if you see here, Node modules. So this basically contains all the um, dependencies uh, or all the modules that that uh, that we use in our solu solution. So these are kind of dependencies that need to be installed uh, under this uh, solution the important thing about this folder is that when we check in our code uh, into let's say any repository uh, for, uh, like github or azure devops anything we do not check in this uh, node node underscore module because this folder itself contains a uh, uh, only dependencies which we can easily install using npm install command so we do not check in this folder uh, the interesting thing I'll tell you about this folder is I'll reveal this folder and here you can see our entire solution um, size will be like around it will be a very huge uh, in size I'm not sure but it will be a very huge size but if you just exclude this folder and uh, this lib and dist will also get uh, deleted uh, when we gulp clean our solution so except these three folders we will check in our code so if you see now the properties now you can see our solution uh, si has size less than a MB so uh, this is the interesting thing when when we uh, check in the code we do not check in the node modules lib and dist folders Oh, this node module says a very bulky I means it's it it will may it, it it may contain around 200 to 300 MB of size okay so node module basically contains all the JavaScript module dependencies okay and it will get downloaded when we install the npm install command uh, to run our solution then the next folder is src folder this is a very important folder because this folder contains all the um, uh, actual code that a developer writes to develop any app these this folder basically contains the tsx file ts file state file props file then the scss file and manifest.json file so these six files are uh, actual files that a developer mainly uh, focus on so the webpart.tsx file is nothing but the file where we write the UI and the functional logic. Also, uh, when we want to update anything in our app, uh, we can update the state of that app using this um, TSX file. And uh, this file will only be available if you are uh, using the React framework. So if, if, if I go here under SRC folder, under webparts folder, you can see I have two apps one is without react and one is uh, with react so i have created this app using no javascript framework and the second app using react framework so under uh, this react framework you can see one components folder and under components folder you can find one tsx so as we know that react is component based um, uh, we can say uh, framework actually react is is not a framework but react is uh, a component based uh, library 
so uh, and uh, so it will create one component folder and under that component folder we will have tsx file but you can see under hello world which is not which is a no javascript framework you can you you will not be able to see any components folder and you will also not be able to see any state props files because that is not a react solution okay so uh, this src folder contains this tsx file which is mainly used for ui and writing the functional logic like getting the data from a sharepoint list uh, updating the data in the sharepoint list or updating the state of our app so that it will um, interact with the end user the second file which is uh, scss file so this is basically a styling file whatever the css you want to write you can write that in this scss file so uh, this is an advanced version of css and we will talk about this uh, scss file as we keep on learning this spfx course uh, when we write any uh, when we when we will develop our first solution we will use uh, we will make use of this file then the third file is the state and props file third and fourth file so these are basically state and props files means these are these these file defines the interfaces for our uh, state and props of the app so so if you are familiar with react uh, then you will easily understand this but if not don't worry we are going to learn about react um, uh, related to spfx means uh, the scope of the react in spfx so if you see here um i have created one i uh, means this props file will be by default there so you can see in this i i i uh informs us it's a interface if you hover over this you can see interface so this this uh solution has only one prop which is description similarly um we can create one state file where we can define the interface for state so we will come to that uh, point later as we proceed so just for now just understand that by default the props file will be there and a no state file we have to specifically create the state file uh, then the next is webpart.manifest.json so basically this file contains the webpart name description group name and webpart icon so uh, mm, let me open this manifest file here you can see uh, it will contain the uh, name of our webpart which is hello world react so here uh, when we hover over the app you can see this description of the app also uh, this will contain the group name so other uh, if you add a web part on a classic page in the uh, top navigation you can see the other folder under which you can see this hello world web part um, uh, web part name so this is the group name you can create one custom group as well and you can give the name here uh, then the last file is the webpart.ts file. So this is the basically the entry point of our webpart and it will extend the base client side webpart. So uh, this class is basically a basic uh, uh, initial class of our whole webpart from which our webpart starts means it's it's basically an entry point of webpart and this class provides the basic functioning of the webpart and it contains the webpart property pin configurations as well. So if you remember, uh, we have the ability to add properties for a web part. So for example, you can configure the list name, you can configure the web, um, web part heading, anything using the property pane. So those details will be under TS file. So here you can see it extends the base client side web part so this is a main class of of our web part which is the entry point of our web part and here under get property pin configuration you can see the property pin so this is one of the property which is description so this property we have also uh, given the interface so the same property we are using here so yeah uh, this is what about the src folder and now only the three files are remaining which are important so those files are under root folder one is the package hyphen log.json and another is package.json both are kind of a similar files only the difference is like package.log uh, package hyphen log defines the exact version details about the dependencies so if i go to the package hyphen log yeah here you can see it will define the each and every details about each dependency uh, it will uh, show the exact version of the um, uh, dependencies that we have used in this 
solution uh, so that uh, in future any other developer uh, use the same solution and if he install npm install so this exact versions of all the dependencies will get added into his machine so that there will be no any conflict issues next file is this package.json this is a similar file uh, but there might be the chances that this file may contain the uh, version like um, 1.1 uh, dot star like this so that uh, it, it it just uh, tells about the major version about the package and there is no guarantee that uh, um, this will contain the exact version of the web part in future if if the developer updates this version or if if it gets auto updated the same will get reflected under package hyphen lock okay so this is uh, these these two are uh, those files where uh, we define the versioning of the dependencies and the last file is the tsconfig.json so this this basically specifies the root files and the compiler options required to compile the project so this this only defines that the uh, what is the root folder of our entire solution so if you open the tsconfig here you can see what are the root folders of our uh, solution and basically we do not update this or we do not edit this but just for the understanding purpose i'm just uh, telling you that uh, this tsconfig is a very basic file that we have and it, it defines the starting point or the uh, root folder sorry a uh, root folder of our solution and uh, these were a uh, few of the important files re related to spfx if you want the details about each and every file you can just walk through this entire blog and you can see all the details about uh, rest of the files yeah so i hope uh, you are now clear about the basic uh, spfx file structuring if so uh, do not forget to like this video and also subscribe to our channel and um, we'll keep we'll we'll keep updated this course as we proceed further so subscribe to our channel so that you will get notified for all the upcoming spfx um, uh, tutorials till then thanks for watching and have a nice day